Welcome everybody, I'm Alexander Linz, head of content of WatchAdvisor.com. Today I am in Lucerne in Switzerland, at the heart of Switzerland. We are at the Lake of Lucerne, or as they say here in Switzerland, the Vierwaldstättersee. And you who follow my work on YouTube, you know that we are presenting a lot of novelties and we are showing you and we're trying always to bring the novelties right on to your screens. But what we are going to do today is something different. We are partnering with uh, uh, embassy that's a jeweler that is based here in Lucerne and has a shop also in Zurich with embassy and embassy was so kind to give us the possibility to show you a comparison of different watches and the watches I'm going to show you are vintage or retro watches it's a very stylish thing today you know the companies come up with these watches that had been done in the past and they do them in a new technology so what you will get is the vintage look of the past but a really new watch that looks like an old watch Don't forget to subscribe and to hit the bell to get our latest notifications. Vintage watches are very trendy these days. This is the reason uh, we have been putting together for you a selection of vintage inspired watches, divers, chronographs, full calendar watch and a pilot's watch. All these watches do have their origins in the past, of course, at least their design. Well, the first one I will show you is the Blancpain 50 Phantoms, a watch that originates in 1954. This time uh, it's a version with a big date. That is a nice additional feature to easily read the time. The Breitling Premier goes back the design in the 1940s. The Mont Blanc chronograph you see here is inspired by Minerva. Blancpain bought the chronograph manufacturer Minerva and is now inspiring its collections, Mont Blanc collections, by the watches, by the chronographs produced by Minerva. And you also see the old Mont Blanc logo on the dial. The Vacheron Constantin 56, Norman is Omen dates back to the year 1956 and is inspired by design of Vacho Constantin of the 1956. The Zenit Type 20 watch is inspired by the French aviator Louis Blériot, Blériot 1909, who was the first man to fly across the English Channel. So this is the inspiration of that Type 20 watch. So the Blancpain 50 Fathoms, I would call, is the mother of all modern diving watches uh, presented in 1954. It was a watch the French Nageur de Combat asked uh, Blancpain to build for them. The Nageur de Combat was a special squad, uh, divers that were meant to execute underwater missions for the French military, for the French Navy, of course. And it was Bob Malobier, the guy who asked um, Blancpain to create a special watch for them that will be able to fulfill all the things they needed. And today I can say the Blancpain 50 Fathoms is one of the iconic diving watches. And of course, all the new models are inspired by that look from the watches from the past. With that basil, the basil today is made out of ceramics with a super luminova inlay. So you can see when you put a lot of light on it, this will gloom like crazy. It looks like it will be artificially lighted with some light uh, underneath, but it's not, of course. You have those typical hands. You have a lot of super luminova applied on the dial. And as already mentioned, I like this execution with the big date. If you are wearing glasses, reading glasses as I do, it's easy to read. The case is made out of titanium. I will turn the watch around now. On the back side, you can see the Blancpain in-house manufactured movement. It's an automatic movement with a silicone hairspring. And um, this is the winding rotor. So it shows you this is an automatic watch. You can see it, the winding rotor here moving. It's a very light watch and a watch that is comfortable to wear on the wrist due to the fact that it's such a light watch. Waterproof to 300 meters. It's a certified diver. You can use the watch, including that see-through bottom for diving if you want. Everything is of course certified and it's a certified diver. The Breitling Premier is part of a new collection that was introduced by Georges Kern 
the new CEO of Breitling only recently and uh, it was the first watch that brought back a little bit more of a vintage style to Breitling. As you all know, Breitling was known for its, let's say, very much tool watch focused design. So you, we had a lot of black, black and even more black, deeper black, black watches. And now there is a certain change in design, in the design language of Breitling. And uh, Breitling is bringing out these vintage pieces. And the design of the Premier dates back to the 1940s. And it is a very nice watch, I have to admit. It looks gorgeous with that contrast on the dial, with those black subtitles of the counters, very nice chronograph, and it's a smooth, much more smoother and much more elegant design as we uh, were used to see at Breitling. You can read on the back side that this is a certifié chronometre, this means that all Breitling watches that are manufactured in Grenchen undergo the official chronometer testing procedure. It's a 14-day testing procedure done by an independent testing company here in Switzerland and it's called COSC, Chronomet Officiel Certifié COSC and this ensures you a absolutely well-regulated and perfectly regulated watch that will keep time in between minus four plus six seconds. So the chronograph movement you see is the B01. It's an in-house chronograph manufactured by Breitling and uh, the entire control of the watch is done by this column. We no, not the entire, but the entire control of start, stop and reset functions of the chronograph is done by the column wheel. So it's a column wheel chronograph. And as already mentioned, it's an in-house movement done by Breitling. And uh, if you don't know it yet, the Breitling uh, chronograph movement is, since it is such a good movement, also used at Tudor in their chronographs. So Breitling sells this chronograph movement to Tudor and the Tudor chronographs use a Breitling movement. The Mont Blanc 1858 chronograph is very much inspired by the chronograph manufacturer Minerva, you might know that Blompa bought Minerva a couple of years ago and they are now inspiring their collections by the chronographs of Minerva of the 30s, of the 20s, 40s and so on. And so this watch also features the original old Mont Blanc logo. That's uh, the logo of Mont Blanc as it is, has been used on their writing instruments and other things they have been manufacturing long before, of course, they started to be a watch manufacturer. But this series of the 1858, that uh, year 1858 dates back uh, when Minerva was founded. This collection is, of course, as I told you, you see it on the hands and the style of the Arabic numbers is very much inspired by the chronographs of Minerva. So there's not much to see from the nice decorated case bottom. This is due to the fact that Montblanc uses a uh, strap that looks like a NATO, but the in fact is not a real NATO because it is fixed with the spring bar in between the two locks. And normally you can, if it's a real NATO, you can pull it out and then you would see the nicely decorated back of the watch. The Vachon Constantin 56 collection is of course inspired by watches from the year 1956. In this case we have to say Nomen est Omen and it's a very classical collection, a very nice collection, also price-wise being positioned at an entry price level so makes these watches more accessible for a younger generation of buyers. The design features a date and month you have the date and the month window here on the dial. You have a moon phase indication. Then you have a pointer here that shows you the date. It moves around. Here's the 31st and here's the 1st. So it moves around during one month. It's not a perpetual calendar. It's not a annual calendar. So to adjust the watch and to adjust different functions, moon phase, date and etc. Uh, end of a month, if the month is not 31 days long, you will have to use one of the pushers that are integrated in the case to adjust these functions. I will show you them now. So this is one of those. 
pushes that is integrated into the case. There's another one here. Here. There is another one here. And there is one more here in between the lux that is operating the moon phase. So every of every one of these uh, push pieces or uh, pushers is uh, there located where it is supposed to be located. So the one close to the date window or to the month window. If you push it, now it's Thursday, it's Friday, it's Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and so on. The same happens if you push here, the months will start. And uh, if you push down here, as I showed you first on the, the downside of the watch, between the lugs, you have the pusher that is taking control of the moon phase. The watch features an in-house manufactured movement by Vachon Constantin. It has a winding rotor in 18 karat red gold. It also uh, carries the Geneva hallmark, the Poinçon de Genève. So the watch has been tested under various conditions and has to fulfill the Poinçon de Genève uh, regulations are quite severe. It has to fulfill certain uh, finishing of the movement and se several construction um, construction details that will then enable the watch to carry the Geneva Hallmark de Poinçon de Genève. The Zenit Pilot Type 20 watch is a watch that has been inspired by an original watch worn in 1909 when uh, Monsieur Blériot crossed the very first time the 40 kilometers from Calais, France to Dover, United Kingdom with an aircraft he manufactured and he uh, constructed himself and on his wrist he was wearing a Zenit watch, a Zenit Type 20 watch. For the time being very courageous flight of only 40 kilometers but we have to get back 1909, it's not 2009, it's 1909, so it's really a long time ago, it was really a heroic thing to do so, to fly over the channel that separates France and Great Britain. So it's a watch made out of bronze. This is, let's say, a more stabilized bronze. You can stabilize the bronze uh, with a chemical process and then it will not change as much its look as it does if it is not stabilized. It is also a slightly green dial. Green is very trendy these days. You will see more green dials coming uh, to the markets very soon, I can promise you. And uh, the, uh, look, the look of the hands and of course of the uh, Arabic numerals applied on the dial are very much inspired by the original watch. As well as the big crown you see here, a huge crown. And the purpose was to enable the pilot to manipulate the watch with his gloves on, so he, it was impossible for him to take off the gloves because uh, he needed gloves for operating the aircraft and to uh, fly the plane. So there was no way of taking off the gloves to open and to rescrew, unscrew a crown. You needed a big crown. So, and if you are wondering what this uh, engraving here at uh, the, on the case means, uh, uh, we have done some research because we weren't sure ourselves. We thought it has something to do with the Blériot flight and his aircraft, of course, it has not. The, in, uh, the engraving HB is Hotel Bravo, that's the abbreviation every uh, Swiss aircraft has on its tail. So Hotel Bravo is Switzerland and this is the serial number of the watch 5211. So Hotel Bravo stands for Switzerland. If the watch would be, for instance, a watch that would be manufactured in Austria, because I'm Austrian there and there will be an Oscar Echo and uh, yeah, and so on. So yep, that's Hotel Bravo for Switzerland and the serial number. So guys, it's time to say goodbye here from Lucerne in Switzerland, from the Lake of Lucerne. Behind you see the famous Chapel Bridge that was built in 1365. And I do also need to say thank you very much to Embassy. Five stores here in Lucerne, one store in Zurich. Embassy helped us out. They made it possible that we could film all these watches that you have just seen on your screens and that we were able to compare them. If you go to Embassy, Tell them that you have seen those videos on YouTube. 
watchadvisor.com and uh, they will invite you to what they call here a Kübli, that's a glass of champagne. Ask for a Kübli, you will get your Kübli and enjoy the watches at Embassy here in Lucerne. And thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed what we have been doing. And I'm very glad that we could bring those watches to you. Thank you very much again. If you like what we are doing, as always, you know what I'm saying now, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and to like our videos, of course, tell your friends and neighbors what we're doing. And if you have any comments to make, use the comment section just here underneath and I will be more than happy to answer you as always. Bye-bye from Lucerne in Switzerland. Bye, guys.